Thanks for tuning in. Hi, I'm Kyla Grogan from HXGN TV. Today we have Luca Castagnani. He is the product strategist from MSC Software, and he's with us to discuss the autonomous driving sector and the future of mobility. So Luca, thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Kyla, for inviting. This is an interesting one because everyone who's been stuck in traffic is interested in this topic, right? <laughs> um, but let's talk about the serious side of it. What have the recent fatal accidents associated with autonomous testing have they had a major impact on the industry? Yes, I think so. I mean, it's a learning process. Of course, as engineers and scientists, we are pretty much enthusiasts of this field and the society uh, sees the benefits. But the reality is that it's a learning process. When we start building railways, there has been plenty of accidents because, for example, at that time, durability was not an issue for engineers. Uh, you just want to have things working. The reality is that traffic is complex. It's complex to manage for human beings. No surprise, it's so complex also for artificial intelligence. All right, so what is your opinion of the balance between what they call real testing miles of autonomous vehicles versus simulated miles? And my guess is you're going to say the simulated miles don't have the same value, yeah? Yeah, they are much more valuable. Really? Yes, I definitely believe this. I mean, if you want to experience rush hours, you only have rush hours a couple of times a day. Huh? You can experience rush hours every time you want in a simulation. You want to simulate a crowd crossing the road and the car stopping in front of all of them. You can simulate all of them whenever you want. You want to simulate snow, it can snow in the middle of the summer. So simulation is way more beneficial because it's completely out of control. When you go on the road performing some testing, the same situation never occurs two times. Yeah. So how do you really know that you have improved? Plus, and that's the story, the part of the story that I actually prefer, you can dare. You can be brave at simulation. Right. You cannot take risk on real roads. Right. That's not a video game. Yeah, that's true. On so a you, computer. Yeah, it's fun. you can run different scenarios and kind Absolutely. of see what happens. And that's the reason why even companies like Waymo with a large fleet of vehicles on the road, yeah. they are testing 25,000 virtual vehicles every day hmm. because you don't want to beta test something on real roads with real children. Huh? Yeah, a real mistake would be painful. Yes. So what is Hexagon's unique value proposition and differentiator in the fast growing autonomous driving sector? How do those two come together? Well, Hexagon is an amazing sweet spot. We come from different areas with different expertise, with different technologies. And funny story is that all these technologies are instrumental to autonomous. So we come from simulation. Yeah. That's something already described. We come from measurements of roads. And actually, if you want to perform simulation, you need to bring reality into yeah. the virtual world. Then we have uh, autonomous stuff that bridges the gap between uh, the simulation side of the story and the testing side of the story. We have the Hexagon content program in which most of the US has been scanned from aerial. So I accuracy data. I can go on like this. <laughs> now, oh, sorry, I don't want to forget our friends from Novatel with absolute precision positioning. That's yeah. fundamental to know where the car is. If you don't know where you are, how can you guess where you want to go? Yeah, I would guess you would not want to do that. No. <laughs> so what, you know, we talk about all this, a lot of advances are happening very quickly, but what would you say are the main challenges that are keeping us from getting to level five autonomy? And how does AI figure into that, artificial intelligence? Wow, that's a master question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is trying to figure out the answer. Huh? I would say that at least few key ingredients has been identified. And I would mention uh, one for sure is that as a society, we are not ready to that. Yeah. What do I mean with this? There is no regulation framework that tells when it's safe to deploy a self-driving car on the road. This is something where OEMs, tier ones and government has to work hand in hand together. And this is a paradigm shift because typically an OEM is pretty secretive on their IP, but you need to share your staff if you want the public to trust what you're doing. Yeah. And this is quite a big shift. So society has to move in this direction. And then I'm challenging you in another aspect. If I'm not driving the car and the car makes an accident, who's going to pay for that? That's true. I was not driving. Yeah. And OEMs are not yet ready to carry for this liability. And if you go to an insurance company, how can I estimate how many accidents you may be involved in? So all this stuff that are non-technical, 
to me are the hardest one because on the technical side, there are thousands and thousands of bright engineers working. And I'm pretty sure that in a very short period of time, I would say within four or five years, wow. all the technical issues will be solved. But the society has to be ready. Kind of has to buy into it and have a collaboration, really. Absolutely. Interesting stuff. All right. Thank you so much for the insight. I enjoyed that. All right. If you would like to watch additional episodes or learn more, visit hxgnspotlight.com. And as usual, thanks so much for hanging out with us.